This lecture is about the Romantic Age, which took place uh, approximately between 1789 and 1837. And during this time, there was a shift from the age of reason, uh, which meant there was a change from the head to the heart. And emotions were in focus, and um, they were also celebrated. And the castle was a typical ro uh, romantic icon. And England during this time was cl clearly a class society, a social pyramid, one could say. At the top was the aristocracy, Aristocracy, uh, a small but influential class of about 200 families who were dukes and barons. Below was the gentry, the traditional landowning class, who perhaps were baronets and knights, but the majority of them had no title at all. And there were about a thousand of them, and their income came mainly from rents, for rents um, from farmers using their land. And the new middle class became very large during the 1800s. People in these layers of societies were farmers and tradesmen, clerks and merchants, teachers and musicians, surgeons and doctors. And at the very base of the pyramid was the so-called lower classes, that is the workers in factories, the laborers on the land, and all those people who in one way or another could be classified as servants. These people were poor, they had low status in society and had very few prospects of improvement in their lives. And the society was changing, becoming industrial rather than agriculture as the towns and cities developed, and the government encouraged free trade. The new middle class became powerful, and there were moves towards voting reform and democracy. Uh, the uh, Romantic Age is sometimes called the Age of Revolutions, and this is because you had the American Revolution in 1776 and the spirit of liberty, equality, and fraternity of the French Revolution in 1789 made it a time of hope and change. For the Romantics, however, reason and intellect were dangerous, and uh, it was the individual spirit and not the ordered society that became important. There was a lot of poetry written during the Romantic uh, era, and to the poets, nature was an animated, meaning that it was full of life, and it was also considered to be divine. And the highest and most ecstatic experience possible was to be at one with nature. And experiencing nature and feeling its beauty would make life meaningful and make you understand the circle of creation. And a cop common topic during this period uh, was the lonesome wanderer. This is a map of the Lake District in northern England, where many of the romantic poets went to be inspired by the beautiful scenery. This is William Blake, one of uh, the most famous romantic poets. He wrote simple but symbolic poems, and he often showed a uh, contrast between the world of nature and childhood innocence, and also a world of social control. And an example of this is the lamb that you see on this slide. Another great romantic poet is William Wordsworth, and his poetry looks inward rather than outward, and uh, he often wrote about how an individual's thoughts and feelings are formed. Wordsworth wrote, often wrote about nature and ordinary people, the day-to-day -day, uh, life in, or in the ordinary world. And in this folder you find um, an example of his poetry in I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud. And read that poet. You can also listen to it if you follow, uh, if you click on this uh, sound file. And do the um, questions along with it. John Keats is considered to be the second generation of romantic poets. And the main themes in Keats' poems are the search for lasting beauty and happiness and for permanent meanings in a world where everything fades and dies. Keats wrote many famous odes, which uh, many were about the contrast between life and death and between completeness and incompleteness. And To Autumn is one of his most famous odes, and you can also find that um, poem in the folder. Percy Bysshe Shelley, he was uh, more a political writer than a poet. He attacked the religion and the morals of the age, and he stated that man cannot prove that God exists. He was an aristocrat, a traveler, and he uh, generally he rebelled against society. He also defended homosexuality, was, which was very controversial at this time. And Shelley wanted greater freedom, and in his best-known lyrical poem, Ode to the West Wind, he makes uh, the wind a symbol of the power of change, as the wind blows away the old life and spreads the seed that will create a new life of greater freedom for all. And you can find a copy of Ode to the West Wind in the folder. This is Lord Byron, who is considered to be one of the most influential romantic poets. His poetry influenced uh, po other poets across Europe. 
and Lord Byron became a legend in his own lifetime, as not only as a handsome poet, but as a rebel, a passionate lover, and he was also exiled from his own country because of the sex scandal. He had a first with many women, one of which uh, wrote this about him. Mad, bad, and dangerous to know. He often wrote about the romantic hero who attacks uh, social conventions and challenges the authorities, and who also searches for, but never finds, peace and happiness. Byron found his best poetic style in, in Don Juan, which is a long comic poem in which he relates the travels and adventures of a Spanish lover. Along the way, he makes satirical and cynical observation of all aspects of human life, love, politics, and fashionable society, and also England. When he died in 1924, the whole of England mourned this great poet. Of course, there were not only poets uh, during the Romantic era, there were also um, novelists. And at this time, many of the novelists were women. The novels were often about young women's experiences of the society of the day. And most famous of the Romantic novelists is Jane Austen. Jane Austen lived, as many uh, women did during this time, uh, traveling around in the south of England. And she made numerous trips to places and people around the South. Um, and through two of her brothers who became naval officers, she learned a lot about the Navy. And thanks to her father's position as a clergyman and her mother's personal connections, she had many opportunities to visit the gentry, which was the higher middle class, uh, which was a traditional landowning class in England. She was uh, closely acquainted with the life of people who spent time on parties and outings. And... Um, she started writing early. Um, she registered, started writing stories for her own amusement before she was 12 years old. And she never married and never had children, which was quite unusual at the time. Jane Austen is considered to be different from other writers at the time, uh, since she was more interested in the moral, social, and psychological behavior of her characters. And she writes mainly about young heroines as they grow up and search for pers personal happiness. Her most famous novels are Sense and Sensibility, Pride and Prejudice, Emma, and Mansfield Park. And there is an extract from Emma in your textbook. The other uh, female authors that I want to mention from this time is Mary Shelley. Mary Shelley was born in London in 1797. She had famous parents. Her father was William Goodwin, uh, who was a philosopher, and her mother was Mary Wollstonecraft, who was a writer and a feminist. When she was f 17, she fell in love with Percy Bysshe Shelley. They eloped and they traveled uh, to, to Europe. Um, in 1816, after Percy's first wife had committed suicide, they got married. And both uh, Percy and Mary were friends with Lord Byron, and they made plans to write ghost stories. But it was only Mary's idea about Frankenstein that was ever completed. Frankenstein is a gothic novel, meaning that gothic romances were mysteries, often involving the supernatural and heavily tinged with horror, and they were usually set against dark backgrounds of medieval ruins and haunted castles. And when Frankenstein was published, many people thought that it had been written by Percy Shelley, because they didn't believe that a 19-year-old girl would be able to write such a horrific story. And the novel was not very well received by the critics, but it was an immediate success with the reading public. And ever since uh, then, there have been a no number of new editions and film adaptations. Frankenstein was hugely successful, but Mary's life was a disaster. Her half-sister committed suicide, and two of her children died, and she had many miscarriages. And in 1822, uh, her husband drowned during a sailing trip, uh, leaving her penniless. Mary lived the rest of her life in England, where she was an outcast in conventional society. She carried on writing novels, short stories, and travel journals, journals to support her son and father, but she never repeated the success that she had had with Frankenstein.